We got a bidet. Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are talking to you about the movie called Talk To Me. Uh, this is an A24 production film, which is what gravitated me to it 100%. Um, we have been big fans of some of their movies in the past. Uh, some of them are very weird. And they are all shocking, interesting, you name it. And so that's what made me really want to go to see this movie. I did not know about it really until one of my friends just posted about it on Facebook. And I happened to notice that A24 was on their uh, little spiel. And so I was like, oh, my goodness, how did I let this one, you know, go underneath our noses? And we didn't even know it was out. And so it happened to be the second movie to the Meg too when we went and saw that so we got to see both these movies at once and it was awesome that they were paired together so we're gonna go ahead and tell you some of our non-spoiler opinions about the movie first and then give it a rating and then we will move into a spoiler section where we can deep dive a little bit more into our ratings with some examples and also just telling you about the movie in general so what i can say is again Big fan of A24. And so my expectations for this movie was just that because we had no idea what this movie was about. It's one of the very few companies that we will go and watch something without even watching a trailer. I didn't see a trailer for this. I don't think Sarah did either. Right? Correct. I have one kind of playing in the background, so I know what information is not spoiler. Um, but I did not watch one prior to watch the movie. Oh, gotcha. Um, so yeah, we had we don't watch trailers for these movies. We just go in and watch them, which again, we don't do that for any other production. I think it's a lot of fun. I, We're always I'm one. I'm gonna take that back and say Bloomhouse. I'll do that with Bloomhouse. Okay. Yeah, they're another. I, I, I really like that production company too. Uh, so for this one, uh, what I was expecting was just something to. Uh, maybe make me feel a little uh, uncomfortable because the past movies have done that. Something that might shock me. Uh, but overall, something that's interesting and something that has a pretty solid ending sequence. Because, um, again, that's what all the other movies do. And so I would say without spoilers that I got that. And I was very, very happy about it. I feel like the movie started off kind of like, oh, don't tell me this is kind of where the company like gives in to some things that are uh, maybe more streamlined through horror films. Because it kind of felt like, you know, it was going to be this uh, teenagers just, you know, maybe like talking to the undead and then like with a Ouija board kind of a thing. And then we just kind of get that whole uh, thing that's been done before happening in this movie and thankfully that is not what happened so um it was almost I, giving me like truth or dare vibes like i think that's another movie where it's kind of teenagers being dumb and then things going crazy wrong yeah so they they kind of took this like sarah said this idea of teenagers being dumb and they actually made a in my opinion a, a pretty good movie about it um i would say one that's above a lot of the other ones um Trying to think of what else we can really say with non-spoilers. You're the one that watched the trailer just now, so the trailer gives away a lot of the main plot. It talks oh, about wow. um they so they show uh using the hand and that the uh you know saying the talk to me and what happens after 90 seconds is that the whoever you're talking to will want to stay and the kind of mysteriousness behind that. Um they I think they kind of focused more on just the event of using the hand and the craziness of that more than um, the rest of like the actual plot of the film. Uh, but they explain 
the hand part a lot, I think, um, and give a lot to go off of, of, you know, crazy things that happen. And uh, our main character, Mia, and uh, her issues with wanting to talk to her mom, um, that's uh, touched on in the trailer, too. And so she's got kind of a uh, confliction of what's going on and how do I use it to help me and things like that. Gotcha. Um, so I guess just to, to kind of reiterate a little bit, um, I, I, I want to go through what the sequence is since you said it's already kind of brought up in the trailer. Um, so there's this hand, it's like, a uh, like a, a bust, but it's only a hand kind of a thing. Uh, a, a bust is like a little figurine from like the chest up. The way it was described on Google was an embalmed hand, hand, which means that it was like a real hand that had somehow been uh, embalmed so that it could be, uh, what do you call that, like sterilized or like um, it's not going to decay. It's really kind of crazy and gross. Interesting. That makes more sense, though. Like it's a connection to um, something that was once alive. Um, but basically, the there's this idea that if you hold the hand and you say talk to me then this being from the dead realm will appear in front of you and then if you will let it you would say like i let you in and what happens is that that being will uh basically take over the character um kind of like our pictures with mia where you know something took over her and her eyes are crazy and you know she's got this weird smile um, and then after around that 90 second mark is when people like the group wants to cut it off, because uh, if you don't, then this being that took over your body may find may discover that they want to stick around in this realm and, you know, steal basically the person's body and like take them to the curb kind of a thing for their. They'll want to stay. Right. So. The, the the group has to stop the process before the 90 second mark. Uh, so that's basically the premise of this movie. You know, there's instead of a Ouija board, it's this other thing that can kind of connect them in this other mysterious way. And, you know, they they think it's a game like it's like the hit thing on social media to see people do this. Uh, a lot of people think it's fake. Some people think it's real and people really don't know until they actually go and, and experience it firsthand. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but I guess <laughs> it works. I love it. So, yeah, that's the basic premise of the movie. Like I said, I thought it was very interesting, the different twists and turns that they did. We'll talk about that more in the spoilers, of course. Um but overall, I feel like A24 delivered again with this film. And knock on wood, you probably can't hear me on the video, but I did do it. Um, that A24 doesn't ever slip up. I think they do their homework. I think they make sure their films are good and interesting. Um, and this movie just makes me excited for the next one, to say the least. Um, was there anything you wanted to mention also before we give some ratings? Uh, in terms of gore factor, because that's one of the things I always look for um, with horror movies, there is a scene or two with maybe some like kind of hard to watch things, uh, but the overall film is not super gory. So if you're someone who struggles with gore, I think you'll be able to look away for the ones, one or two scenes that are um, somewhat disturbing and be able to still enjoy the film. Um I think that's about the only thing I'm going to add to what you've said. What would you give it as a rating? Uh, I was trying to look up. There's actually way more A24 films than I thought there was. I was trying to look some up so that um, I could give some idea of what some of these are uh, in comparison. So some of the ones that we've seen, again, because apparently there's way more. Uh, we've seen Midsommar, we've seen Hereditary, we've seen X, we've seen Pearl. Um, I still want to see the, um, was it Bo or Bew is Afraid? Bo. Bo is Afraid. Uh, I don't know if that's on streaming yet, but if it is, we got to get on that. Um, but we've seen all those, liked them all. And so where would I kind of put this movie in relation to those? Um, 
I think I'd give this movie a good 7 out of 10, like a high 7 out of 10. Uh, they were creative with the film. I think they kind of took some some more simple concepts and maybe drew them out a little longer because they needed to, you know, get that runtime kind of a thing. Um, I, I think they maybe could have added a little bit more to have some more to munch on with the overall plot. Um, but overall, I think it was a good film. I just think it's a high, high seven. I don't think I can give it an eight. My gut, when I think about an eight, my gut is like, eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> So I'd say a high seven. What about it's funny you? you say that because an eight is where I was going to put this one. Um, I'm trying to think of this film, not just as an A24 film, but more as like, where does it fall in the horror genre? You know, in terms of things like shock factor, how gory is it? How suspenseful is it? Does it leave me kind of on the edge of my seat? Are there surprising things? Um and how much does the overall story make sense? Is this something that's just been done before and it's kind of like a repeat? And so keeping all of those things in mind, um, I feel like it's, I mean, talking to the dead is not a new concept, but the way that they brought this to life, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> um, We're just full of it today. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's got a fresh take. And so I really appreciate that. Um, there's a couple plot lines towards the end that they're the way they wrapped it up left me with some questions uh that i it's kind of one of those things of sometimes when they don't show something on purpose um and it leaves it more mysterious it left me more confused than anything so uh not fully a hundred percent sure on the ending of the film uh is where i'm gonna dock at a couple points um, but I, I feel pretty good sitting at an eight. Nice. I think, we're, I think we're ready to jump into spoilers here. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to hear about spoilers of the movie, cause you're going to go see it. Now's your time to click away. Uh, we're going to start going over the plot of the movie and some other things that, uh, would be what our ratings are based off of. So Jeremy, would you like to. Start uh, with what the plot is, or I can go over it. Up to you. Yeah. Um, I was just... Because you were saying, like, the... um, Not fully understanding the ending um, because of just, you know, the, the visuals we got to see. Um, I was trying to see if I could look it up on, like, Wikipedia or whatever to see... Uh, if we would get a clarifying answer, but I don't think I do uh, personally. Um, uh, okay, so we're going to talk about the movie here. So this movie, it kicks off with the opening scene of like a party and we see that someone is going to check on a friend and they go into this room and their friend is there and the friend comes out of the room and stabs his friend to death and then goes out in the middle of the party and stabs himself in the face. And that's what we're greeted with in this movie. Um, we don't really get any context to what's going on, just that this crazy thing just happened. And, you know, we were there to um, take it all in and try to see what's going on. And then we cut to, you know, basically our, our main plot of the story. Um, we have Mia, which is behind us. And um, her friend, I think you said, was Jade, right? Yep. Uh, her friend Jade, they are pretty close. And Jade has a brother, Riley. Um, and I think it, I think it was Jade and Mia, definitely Mia. I'm questioning whether it was Jade in the car. They were coming home one night and it was super dark out. Uh, and they see, we think it was a kangaroo. That was in the oh, middle. Oh, this of the was this was Mia and Riley. Mia and Riley. Okay, I was like, it was either Jade or Riley. I can't remember which one it was, but um, so Mia and Riley are um on their way home, and they see this. Well, again, we thought it was a kangaroo. Probably was in the middle of the road, and it was hurt badly, but it was still alive. And Mia was 
contemplating whether or not to kill, like put it out of its misery. That way it didn't have to lay there in the middle of the road and suffer. And even though she tries to basically like floor it and almost run it over for one last blow, she can't gather herself to do it. And they just go home and they leave the the creature there to suffer uh, for the rest of its life. We never see that creature again, but it is pretty key for this movie. Um, the next part of the movie that really uh, starts to dive into the story part is that um, Mia, Jade, I believe Daniel, and um, you just said his name, Riley, they all go to this party. And at the party is where this, you know, thing that is huge in social media, which is the interaction with the hand and they actually get to see it firsthand. They all think it's a joke, um, but they get to see it firsthand. And so Mia decides to uh, take a shot and see what this thing is all about. And so she raises her hand. She volunteers to uh, take part in this. And what they do is they strap her down like with a belt to the chair so she can't get up and out of her chair. Uh, and then they put the little hand thing in front of her. And, you know, she's instructed you have to... Uh, you know, hold the hand and repeat the words, talk to me. And then this random being will appear in front of her. And then it's up to her whether she says, I let you in. And if she does, then they take over her being. And so, um, you know, they the people that do this kind of look like they're choking while the thing is, you know, becoming one with them. Um, but after a few seconds they turn into whoever this being is that they allowed in. And then that being interacts with the group. Um, they can't get up because they're strapped into the chair, but they do talk to the group. And so, you know, it gets close to that 90 second mark and then they cut her off and then she comes back to normal. Um, as we start to see more and more of this, because... Um, Really, what's going on with this process is it's the cool thing to do. It's the thing, you know, that social media is making a big thing. And um, Jade has the boyfriend, Daniel. Daniel is actually the ex-boyfriend of Mia. And so we start to get this interesting drama where um, it was Daniel that decides to do this process. And, you know, he says, you know, I let you... Or, I let you in, all that other good stuff. The thing that takes him over basically like taunts Jade saying that Daniel um, enjoyed being with Mia more from uh, a more physical aspect of a relationship. And um, this takes Jade off guard entirely. Um, and, you know, obviously she's like, wanting this all to stop, and eventually they do cut him off. He does some other really weird stuff that I don't really want to repeat here on the channel. Um, needless to say, uh, his interaction with this thing is one of those things where I'm like, if I'm going to see something shocking in this film, this is one of them. Um, so this whole process happens. It's embarrassing to Daniel. He's like begging them to delete the videos from uh, social media and stuff. Um, but what we eventually learn is that Jade's brother Riley wants to be a part of this little interaction. And the thing is, is that he's really young. He's like 15, 14 or 15 or something. And I think one of the rules is that you have to be like an adult to be doing this. Um, my interpretation was that, you know, if you are an adult, maybe you can like hold your own a little bit more against these beings. Whereas if you're a young kid, you may be taken advantage of kind of a thing. So they were very leery on letting him do it. Um, but they basically decided instead of 90 seconds, we'll only let him in there for like 45 or 50 seconds. And then we'll cut him off um, just to kind of hope, hopefully offset that whole age thing. And so Riley goes in there. He gets possessed. Well, lets them in. And turns out that the being that he lets in is Mia's mother. And, you know, Sarah mentioned in the non-spoiler section um, that, you know, Mia has been desperate to 
uh, be able to talk to her mom because there is an incident that happened the night her mom died, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, so she's been desperate to talk to her mom ever since. And so like this whole 50 second limit thing is going on and she's like, no, no, I need a couple more seconds because she's trying to talk to her mom. And basically uh, they go over the time that they're supposed to be giving Riley and all heck breaks loose. Um, Riley starts like smashing his face on the little table that's holding the hand. Um, he gets whipped across the room, smashes his face even more. Um, and he's like super bloodied and uh, eyeball. Oh, yeah. And he like gout tries gouging out his own eyeball. Um, it, it was something that's for sure. Uh, and it basically lands him in the hospital. And, you know, they're trying to tell Riley's mom about like, we can't really tell you what happened because we'll be in big trouble for what we did. So they're just like saying, we don't know what happened. He's just in a lot of pain, uh, so to speak. And so Riley's in the hospital. Uh, I'm going to double back to the Mia's mom's aspect here. So Mia's mom died. And I think I'm going to get this correct. But if need be, Sarah, you can interject. Uh, so... Her mom supposedly overdosed on sleeping pills. Um, I didn't fully understand what was going on with the story. What it sounded like was that she overdosed on sleeping pills. And then maybe she like regretted it or something. Because she Mia was talking about she was clawing at the door. Um, but the dad was like asleep on the couch. Maybe they had like a fight or something. And her mom just wanted to be done with things. But... I, what did you think? Uh, I'm not fully sure how to interpret. And I, I don't think Mia is either. Um, because it, it seems like it's a suicide. And her dad right. later shares a note with her later in the film. Um, of basically the mom saying like, you know, this is the first time in a long time that I've had hope. Because I have hope that with me being gone because I'm gone or, you know, in a better place that maybe you guys can move on with your lives. And so I feel better knowing that you guys will be better off without me kind of a thing. But Mia doesn't really believe that because in her interactions with her mom in the spirit world, her mom's basically saying that her dad's lying and that she didn't want to kill herself. And so I'm, I'm, I don't know if like the dad forced her to take all the pills or something. And then that's why, you know, she was like locked in the bedroom I, I'm not a hundred percent sure of this uh this plot line here. Yeah, it was it was kind of all over the place, but maybe it's it's kind of like what you said. Maybe uh, we're supposed to kind of feel like Mia, where we're not quite sure what really happened. Um, so because all this stuff is happening, uh, as far as like Riley, you know, bashed his face. He was in the process too long, so. Now he's actually got this issue going on where uh, when we're talking about the being might want to take over their body and stuff, um, it's kind of on and off with how that is working. What there's what the us audience members and his family are seeing at this point in the film is that, you know, he's at the hospital. He's got all the tubes and whatnot hooked up to him, trying to keep him alive. Um, but he's basically like in a coma. Uh, he's not really talking. He's just there. They but, they learned that if he's not sedated, he will try to hurt himself again. So they're basically forcing him to stay sedated. Oh, I didn't catch that. So that's good. Uh, good that you pointed it out. So we got that going on. Mia is starting to like see things. Um, so she did. They went through and did this process tons and tons of times. Uh, and Mia is starting to, uh, like I said, see things. She thinks she's seeing her mom, and she's also, uh, she's telling her friends, and also us as an audience are learning that, you know, she's been having something like these nightmares where she's looking in the mirror and she doesn't see herself. Um, we do see a sequence like that at one point where she goes into like a bathroom and she looks in the mirror and doesn't see herself. Um, but, we start to have a plot develop where 
uh, she is seeing her mom and her mom is kind of telling her things throughout the story, uh, piecing together different things about, um, like Sarah said, um, saying that the dad is lying about certain things. Um, basically, Mia's way of trying to get her closure about what happened with her mom and trying to talk to her about all these different things. Uh, but by doing that, Mia is like falling further and further down the rabbit hole with this whole uh, talk to me process. I feel like she's like really starting to lose herself in it and not understanding what's real and what isn't. Um, because there's even a part where she... I don't know why they were having a sleepover, her and Daniel, but um, like she is hallucinating that she is seeing this like un this dead person which would be like the process from this whole talk to me and she sees this person like sucking on the dude's foot and so when the guy actually wakes up he actually sees that it's Mia doing it to him and so Mia thinks that she saw someone else doing it but really she's doing it and so there's like this really weird psyche thing that's happening with her uh, and this other realm, so to speak, which is yeah. also driving more tensions with uh, Jade because, you know, that's her current boyfriend. Yeah, well, that she talked earlier in the film about the talk to me process being like this amazing out of body experience because you can still feel and hear and see everything, but you feel like you're in the passenger seat. So she was seeing this other person stuck on the feet, but really it was her because it's her body. She's just seeing it from the passenger seat, so to speak. But yeah. it was really strange. Yeah, it was very strange. So, um, see, where does this movie go next? Okay, so she learns that Riley is from her, from her mom and talking to her. She learns that Riley uh, is in danger. Basically, Riley's being is lost in this other realm and there's people that are hurting him and it's kind of up to Mia to try to go and save him. And so Mia goes to the hospital where uh, Jade's mom is actually thinking like Mia is the one that did this to Riley because she's into drugs and stuff. Um but she was totally wrong, of course, Us as, an, as the audience know that it was this whole talk to me process. But she goes to the hospital room and she, you know, has the hand thing with her and uh, she connects with it and says, talk to me. And there's this little girl that appears and she's talking to this little girl and she says, uh, you know, where's Riley? Can you show me where he is? And we see like this very quick montage type thing where it's showing like these uh creepy people basically like holding riley down and hurting him um and so that's how mia uh conceptualizes what's actually happening to him uh do you want to take over from here yeah so that was a really weird situation because she the little girl, instead of Mia saying, I let you in, the little girl said, I let you in. So mm -hmm. she was able, so Mia was able to see the other realm, which was the first time any character in the film had been able to do that. Um, so that's how she was able to see Riley. Uh, what she, she, what she kind of does next is she's trying to piece things together is um, she goes home to, I don't know, gather supplies or whatever. Maybe she's just going to bed for the night. I'm not sure. But she talks to her dad because her dad tells her about the note, the, the suicide note. Um, and she's just not really sure what to think of it because her relationship with her dad is kind of estranged. Um, and her mom's been telling her that the note's not real. And the mom later says that that's not even your dad. That's just some other guy. And so Mia sees... Uh, we as the audience see that the dad is just sitting on the couch in the living room, but Mia's in her room and she's hearing this banging on her door and uh, what sounds like her dad saying, like, let me in kind of a thing. Like, it's a very high intensity moment where you feel like if the guy busts through the door, he's going to try to hurt her. Like, some serious stuff's about to go down. Um, 
And so in the process, once the guy finally gets in, she can see that it doesn't look like her dad. So she grabs a pair of scissors to stab him. Um, But the moment that she stabs him, she realizes it's her dad, but it's too late. And so she essentially just stabbed her dad in the neck and then, like a dummy, pulled the scissors out. So now all the blood's gushing out and everything. And uh, she didn't mean to stab him, but she did. And so it's kind of um, making you think back to the very beginning of the film with the guy that stabbed somebody else and then killed himself and kind of wondering if that same thing might be happening to Mia. Uh, we're, we're led to believe that the dad's dead. Uh, we later learn that he's not because Jade goes to the house um, looking for Mia and sees the dad struggling and is able to call 911 and stuff. And whether or not he's really alive or dead kind of left a mystery because you know it's one of those situations of like that you would expect that to be a fatal wound but yet he's not dead when jade gets there so i'm not 100 percent sure on his character ending let's not forget the trickery that actually happened with that um because jade yeah. or mia calls jade and is basically like you know, freaking out about things and saying that she needs her help and she needs her to go there like immediately, like to her house. And so Jade takes off and heads towards the house. But we as the audience see that Mia is actually in the hospital parking lot because she has something else that she's planning to do. Yeah, so her mom basically makes her believe the only way to end Riley's suffering is for him to die. Uh which is strange because we had heard earlier that if you die while you're possessed, then they get to keep you forever. So like, we don't really know if his death will release him from the suffering or maybe it will just be eternal suffering. Um, But Mia seems to think the right thing to do is to try to kill him. And she winds up sneaking him out of the hospital uh, in a wheelchair. And she's like standing on the side of the highway with him contemplating just like with the kangaroo am i able to put him out of his misery can i do this like this is a pretty serious thing so she's got all these things going through her mind uh by this time jade has made it back to the hospital to figure out like oh my gosh this is crazy you know she wasn't there looks like she killed her dad what's going on um and so the way this film wraps up is mia has riley in a wheelchair on the side of the highway, Jade is coming up behind her and then kind of we get like a flash and then we see that Mia is on the highway. Mia had been hit and it looks like Jade has Riley safe and sound on the side of the highway. Either that or he got hit too and she pulled him out of the way. I'm not 100% sure if he got hit or not. If he's actually dead or not, I'm not sure. Um, According to Wikipedia, it was just her that got hit by a car. Okay. That's kind of what it looked like, um, but I'm not sure how physically Jade would be able to make Mia get hit by a car and not Riley when Riley was in a wheelchair on the other side of Mia. Like, if you push Mia, the wheelchair is going to be pushed too. So, like, I'm not I'm not sure how quite how that logistically worked. Um, but the grand finale ending to this film... Mia is uh, kind of battered and bloodied and walking through the hospital. She sees uh, she sees Riley in one of the hospital rooms with his sister and his mom. She sees her dad at the end of the hallway and she's kind of trying to tra- uh, chase him down uh, because she wants to talk to him and kind of thinking that like maybe I didn't kill him, like what's going on kind of a thing. Um But then she starts to look down and she sees that her fingers are all broken and weird shaped and stuff. And I think she's kind of piecing together that things aren't adding up the way that they're supposed to. And she, her whole world goes really dark. And then she sees this bright light. Like imagine a, imagine you're in the middle of nowhere and the pitch black and you see a flashlight. So she goes towards it. And it winds up being that she is on the other end of somebody else saying, talk to me. And uh, so now she is on that other side or the other realm and is able to talk to whatever strangers say, talk to me with the hand. 
pretty that's, crazy. Where the, that's where the movie closes out. It's kind yeah. of interesting how it all, like the kangaroo thing, paralleled later on, and you know she was put out of her suffering um, because she was going nuts seeing all the different things happening and. Uh, she had contemplated, like, you know, I didn't kill that kangaroo, but I can take out, I can take care of Riley um, and learn my lesson from this. But she just ultimately does it to herself. Um, so it's kind of cool to see think that. she jumped? I think she jumped. I do. I think she did it. I mean, that would make sense. I just didn't really think of that as even a possibility. Personally, I wish I could see that scene again, because what what we see as an audience is we see her right next to the road, and then we get the point of view of a car that's driving down the road, and then they swerve and stuff. And we, like, when I was watching that, m my focus was on why am I in this car? And I wasn't paying attention to what was in front of the car. So I, I and like, outside the windshield, so I wish I could rewatch that small segment because maybe that will give us our answer. But in my opinion, I think I think she jumped out. Personally. Yeah, it happened so fast. Because like you said, I, I think Riley would have somehow been thrown into it unless Jade went down there, pushed, took Mia aside and then decided to kill her friend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, once she found out what Mia did to her dad, she knew Mia was dangerous. Oh, yeah, because she did call her mom and she was like, Mia's dangerous. And then that's how the mom found out that uh, Riley was not in his room anymore. So, yeah, there was a lot to take in, a lot to unpack from the film. Um, I thought a lot of this stuff was interesting and I didn't see things coming. Like when... Uh, Mia called from the parking lot to have Jade get out of the hospital. I was like, wow, that was actually pretty nifty. I didn't see that coming. Um, I thought the whole idea of talking to her mom through Riley at first glance was going to be like super cliche and again was going to be something that was super tropey that we've seen before. But again, they they really took an idea and expanded on it in a way where I feel like it was its own. It was unique. It wasn't just seeing another one of those kinds of movies. And I think that's what I really appreciated about it. Yeah, I, I definitely liked that. They, they took something that's kind of been done so many times being teenagers, doing dumb stuff and having to deal with the repercussions, especially when trying to talk to the dead. And I feel like they took it and twisted it in so many different ways and really made you think about um, things in a, in a different way. And they took on some new twists. And, you know, one of the big things with horror movies that I try to use with my ratings and stuff is predictability. And I don't feel like this movie was very predictable. I feel like it had a lot of unique twists and turns um to the plot line and really kind of the only things that bother me in terms of excuse me what would make this uh a less than perfect movie is that i'm still kind of unsure of what happened with the dad if if he's alive or not i don't think he should have been alive when jade found him uh, but and maybe he's supposed to be dead when jade found him but it looked like he was breathing so that's kind of weird or a missed up um and then same thing is I'd like to know what happened to Riley. Like, did he die? Is he, uh, does he somehow recover from this because Mia's connection is gone? And so, you know, she's able to like save him in the parallel world or something, or I'm just not sure. I feel like there's those couple loose ends of like, eh, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with this. Um, you know? Yeah. Um, I think what was what what's cool about watching A24 films from what we've seen in the past is we we kind of I feel like it's a it's a different viewing experience because of what they've already established in other films. Because like when we saw the scene with the kangaroo, I was like, they're not doing this just to waste time. They're doing this for a reason. I can't wait to see what the payoff is, which 
in turn end up being her dying later on, put out of her suffering. And so uh, the the one part that I mentioned in the non-spoiler section where I thought it was a little bit drawn out was the Riley process. Um, I feel like there were there was a bit more emphasis on saving Riley than there was her trying to figure out her own issues. It's kind of hard to describe because they, they do inter uh, mingle the plot lines as the movie goes. Um, I just thought I wanted to focus more on what was going on with Mia than Riley. Um, just because, you know, she was the main attraction, so to speak. Um, and probably also because it felt like he was already gone. So I was still wasting time on him. Like he's not savable or like he's beyond saving. So why are we still trying to save him? I guess. Yeah. But also, I mean, also thinking about the whole kangaroo situation, that was her contemplation. You know, how can I save him? Uh, he's suffering. Uh, and she, they don't make it like, in your face that she may have this whole kangaroo incident in the back of her mind. But I feel like us as an audience member can almost superimpose our ideas of that, of like, you know, she went through this feeling not too long ago about seeing something suffering and contemplating whether to take it and put it out of his misery. And now she's being told by her mom that, If she, you know, basically takes out Riley, that he'll be uh, liberated from the suffering that he's doing. And so she has to, you know, make that choice again. But it's a little more uh, close to heart, so to speak, because, you know, it's a family friend. She the mom says you're part of our family to her. And so it's kind of like, you know, a, a, a little brother figure that she is contemplating whether to kill or not, you know, to end this suffering. But. Uh, I, the more I talk about it, the more I want to increase my rating, but I'm going to stick by it. You know, if people didn't come to the, the spoiler section, I I don't want to change it. I, I I'll still stick with my high seven and that's more or less because I feel like some of their other movies have been a bit more interesting, but I think on its own, like we've been talking and saying over and over, they took something that's been done and made it its own. And that was the biggest thing that came out of this movie. Uh, It's definitely one that I'll probably watch again, just like some of the other A24 films. And I think that really um, gives a good uh, testament to what uh, we got out of it. Uh, Was there anything else you wanted to say about the movie before we head on out? I do enjoy watching these films with our friends who haven't seen them because while we don't have the shock factor anymore because we've already seen it, uh, we get to watch other people enjoy that shock factor. And then for us, you know, we get to pick up on things that maybe we didn't catch during the first watch. So it's kind of like a whole nother viewing experience seeing it the second time around. Yeah. And I know the next time around, I'm definitely going to pay attention to that traffic scene to see if I can get any more clarity on it. Um, this is definitely a movie I would like to see again to be able to go back and do that kind of a thing and maybe understand it a little bit more Um, because there's definitely some other A24 films that we have watched multiple times uh, not just once for ourselves and once with friends it's like it's a good movie we're going to watch a horror movie we're going to pick one of these A24 films just because they're crazy you know Um, so yeah If you enjoyed this type of video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. We are doing tons of movie discussions this year. Uh, As to um, your requests, as we put out that poll not too long ago and you wanted more movie discussions, uh, we got tons coming in the future and there's tons that we're excited about and we can't wait to talk about them with all of you. Drops a like if you liked the video and drops a comment letting us know if you saw Talk to me. I hope you do if you enjoy horror movies because this one is unique and good. Um, But then, as always, everybody, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.